Hello again in this video clip series, My Journey to God in a Very Circularized World. This should be video clip 114. Several years ago, uh, here in the Diocese of Perugia, where I have been incarnated since 1993, uh, on September 14th, <clears throat> 2016, at our monthly formation of the clergy of the Diocese of Perugia, that we have monthly meetings for the formation of the priests. It was, uh, it was the beginning that we, where we're going to spend that whole year on Amoris Laetitiae, to study Amoris Laetitiae. And so at the beginning of that year, in other words, September 14, 2016, our Cardinal, Cardinal Bassetti, who was also the president of the Italian Episcopal Conference, he said these words as an introduction that I would like right now to read. And I would like to also say that uh, when I went to these meetings, just to, I, I always recorded the audio. And so I had word for word of what he was saying. And I also put it on YouTube in Italian, of course, that you can also find and read. If you go to the art, this article, Forbidden to Speak About Sin, you will find the reference to uh, the, the Italian and the YouTube. So my cardinal then, at that moment, at the beginning of this year that we would study of Marcia Tici, he, he said the following. I would like to say something that I forgot to tell you, but I feel it is important because I myself had to reflect a lot on this to convince myself. Ah. <laughs> when you read it, in this way, I will have tried to give you an explanation. In the number 301 of Amoris Laetitiae, where the Pope explicitly says, <clears throat> it can no longer simply be said that all those in irregular situation are living in a, in a state of mortal sin and are deprived of sanctifying grace. And then he continues, there can exist factors that limit the possibility of decision and of responsibility. He continues, look at this. This is something that should be underlined because we often do this and we say that they live in conditions of mortal sin. This we cannot say according to the magisterium of the church. He, he then continues, he says, and the, pe and, the, and the Pope's motive motivates this with what with the Catechism of the Catholic Church for Adults says. So, so and then in, in, in continuing number 302 in Maurice Laetitia, which says, imputability and responsibility for an action can be diminished or even nullified by ignorance, inadvertence, duress, fear, habit, inordinate attachments, and other psychological or social factors. That, that was quoted from the Catechism, paragraph 1735. And then he continues, The Pope knows the Catechism of the Catholic Church for adults. I do not know if we sometimes, when we criticize the documents, know perfectly the Catechism of the Catholic Church for adults. <clears throat> If they cannot receive communion, it is because they are irregular, also according to canon law, and because you cannot construct a, a sacrament, which is the sacrament of the Eucharist, which unites on the ashes of another sacrament. Not because we go along, th along thinking, and the first thing that we think about is that we are in the state of mortal sin. Can I just put up my own parenthesis in here? The underlying goal here of the modern church is to eliminate sin and guilt. There's no more guilt, no more sin, so everything's free. We're free of God and free of the Ten Commandments, and there's no more sin. That's what's under this. They want to arrive to the point of slowly taking away the consciousness of sin, and that so we will no longer need a Savior, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. So now I'll continue with what Cardinal Bersetti says here. This we do not have the right, because 
in the depth of the conscious only God reads. I say this as teacher and also as doctor of the faith in as far as I am a bishop because I must correct also certain positions which sometimes are in some of you. <laughs> it's not at me. He's looking at me. <laughs> I know that some of you do not share these things. That's true. <laughs> but if you do not share these things before speaking or writing or sending documents around, become, <laughs> like what I do, become informed with the Catechism of the Catholic Church for adults. Study in depth the Catholic Catholic theology, and then open your mouth. <laughs> he continues, Another aspect of this is from Benedict XVI in Veritas Splendor. I believe that if someone doubts that he is not a good theologian, he is greatly mistaken. Benedict says, always precise, Circumstances or intentions can never transform an act intrinsically evil by virtue of its object into an act, subjectively good or defensible as a choice. The Cardinal, he says he knows so well the, the Catechism and all these things. <laughs> that was not from Benedict, that was from Pope John Paul II in Veritati's Splendor. <laughs> He, 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 he totally quotes it wrong and everything else, but he's the one that puts us straight. He continues now, The Pope says that what is, be, is before evil is evil, and things should be called out by name from the theological and moral, moral, moral point of view. But, says Veritas de Splendor, the imputability and responsibility for an action can be diminished or even nullified by ignorance, inadvertence, duress, fear, habit, inordinate attachments, and other psychological or social factors. Again, the, the Cardinals was saying the phrase is from um, uh, from Amoris Laetitia 3, 302. This is the doctrine of the Church, he continues. Therefore, do not say to anyone, you are in mortal sin. You can say, based on what I, I verified and what has happened in life, you are in, in an irregular position in regards to the church. Let us see. But the, but the talk, though, must always be done starting with the right premises. And he continues, Forgive me, but this thing is really what I wanted to say in a clear way. Here it is, because there is going around strongly things against the magisterium of the Pope on this. You do not, you do not do this. No, this makes me... Now I do not want to be polemical. I spoke strongly, because sometimes the truth should be said with force, you see. So that was the... Uh, Introduction. Uh, uh, the, the, that year we spent our morning stages from our from our cardinal. My cardinal. Now I'd like to analyze it a little bit more here. My cardinal says, "I say this as teacher and also as doctor of the faith, in as far as I am bishop." And so I said, "I did not know that all bishops are doctors of the church. It is the church." Is the church the author, author of the truth or the handmaid of the truth? When Pope John Paul II spoke to the bishops in September 1987 in California, he did not say to the bishops that we must obey me as Pope, but descent from the magisterium of the Catholic Church. In other words, the truth from God, not from me, from God. I, I, in fact, I'd like to repeat exactly what the Pope said in California in 1987. He's, uh, he, he, he spoke to the bishops against this pick-and-choose smorgasbord type of Catholicism. He said in that occasion, It is sometimes reported that a large number of Catholics today do not adhere to the teaching of the Church on a number of questions, notably sexual and conjugal morality, divorce and remarriage. 
Some are reported as not accepting the church's clear teaching on abortion. It has also been noted that there is a tendency on the part of some Catholics to be selective in their adherence to the church's moral teachings. It is sometimes claimed that dissent from the magisterium is totally compatible with being a good Catholic and poses no obstacle to the reception of the sacraments. Then John Paul II says very strongly, this is a grave error that challenges the teaching office he, he's saying great error. He said, they're in mortal sin, so don't, get to, don't take communion. Whereas Amoris Laetitia and my cardinal says, you can't, it's, it's forbidden to say those things. And the saints always try to help us to recognize mortal sin so as to overcome it and also to not make a sacrilegious communion. Now it's totally reversed in the modern church because sin no longer exists. I continue, this is a grave error that challenges the teaching office of the bishops of the United States and elsewhere. I wish to encourage you in the love of Christ to address this situation courageously in your pastoral ministry, re relying on the power of God's truth to attract, sent, to attract assent and on the grace of the Holy Spirit, which is given both to those who proclaim the message and to those to whom it is addressed. May God bless you and Mary guide you.